Maybe you've heard of PoE or power over ethernet before, but you've wondered how plausible is it really to implement this in my building? PoE has many advantages, the main one being that it can transfer both power and data on a single cable. Back in the early 2000s, this was really cool because technologies like VoIP phones and IP cameras could be wired with just one cable rather than two. PoE is still kind of cool today, but the latest version of PoE, PoE Type 4, came out in 2018 boasting 90 watts of power per cable. For context, 90 watts can power PoE-enabled LED lights or small PoE-enabled computers. Even though it cuts back on cables by combining power and data into one cable, the power limitations of it sometimes mean that more cables need to be bundled together to provide enough power to loads, namely LED lighting. When comparing the pros and cons of PoE, we're going to consider this from a lighting perspective to simplify things. These are the main advantages of powering lights with PoE. First of all, PoE distributes low voltage DC power directly to lights. If you're using LEDs, they need DC power anyway, so this cuts back on inefficient AC to DC conversions if you use a PoE system. Secondly, delivering power and data on a single cable makes it easier to automate and optimize lighting systems for efficiency and real-time occupant needs. Design and installation of PoE lighting is simpler and quicker than the installation of typical AC powered lighting systems because it's low voltage and lighting zones are defined by software. PoE also cuts the number of cables needed down for smart lighting systems by combining power and data into one cable as we mentioned before. And finally, with it being a low voltage system, conduit and mechanical protection may not be necessary. All right, now let's dive into the main disadvantages of PoE. Type 4 PoE systems can only provide 90 watts per cable, as I mentioned before. So for a 25,000 square foot commercial office space, for example, about 4,000 watts would be needed to power lighting. In this case, dozens of PoE cables would need to be bundled together to provide enough power to the lighting. This increases the cost and complexity of installing PoE. Installing PoE can also be expensive for lighting because it requires special CAT series cables that have thicker gauges for copper, as well as PoE switches or injectors. Also, because it's a low voltage system, distances can rarely exceed 100 meters due to voltage drops along the cable. PoE also only works with PoE-enabled devices, so light fixtures must be compatible with PoE. Cables in a PoE system also have to run the exact length of distance from the switch to the device. This means the cables must be stripped, cut, and terminated with an RJ45 plug to be inserted into the PoE-compatible device. This can make the installation of a PoE lighting system pretty time-consuming. And finally, in general, daisy chaining is difficult with a PoE system, making more home runs and therefore more cabling necessary. This also increases the cost and complexity of implementing PoE. So what do you think? Would PoE work in your building or would you want to look for another system that distributes DC power and data? Let us know in the comments. And also, if you found this video useful, let us know by hitting the like button and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'll have plenty more videos like this. And one more thing, one alternative to PoE is Argentum's DC power distribution system called Digital Current. It provides up to 450 volts of direct current power without a wattage limit and transmits data through a wireless mesh network rather than a cable. Feel free to look into our system a little bit more on our website. You might find that it would be a good fit for your building if you've considered PoE before.